In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible takes two chapters in the book of Genesis to tell the amazing story of the creation of the universe. But there are 50 chapters in the Bible about a tent in the desert, a tent known as the tabernacle. What is so significant about this simple tent in the wilderness? And why does it require 50 chapters of the Bible to explain it? The tabernacle, this seemingly unpretentious tent, holds the key to knowing God. The tabernacle reveals to us who God is and what He does. For 400 years, the Israelites were slaves in Egypt until God used a fellow Hebrew named Moses to free them from their bondage. Shortly after departing from Egypt, God called Moses to spend time with him on Mount Sinai. On the mountain, God gave Moses two systems for the Israelites. First, He gave a system of law. At the same time, God gave a system of sacrifice. God explained to Moses in minute detail how to offer sacrifices that would cover the sins of the people and allow them to be in relationship with Him. God's next instruction to Moses was to house this system of law and sacrifice in a sacred, set-apart place called a tabernacle. For the next 400 years, this portable tent became their place of worship. The temporary purpose of the tabernacle was to establish God as the true God, but the eternal purpose of the tabernacle was to point to Jesus Christ as the fulfillment of God's plan of salvation. Every fabric, every metal, every color, every design pointed in some way to Jesus Christ who became not just a temporary sacrifice, but the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. His one-time sacrifice on the cross opened the way for everyone to have all access to God. In 2005, Rick was invited to be the chaplain of one of the Live 8 concerts that was held in Philadelphia. And he was given an all-access badge, which meant that he could go anywhere, backstage with the celebrities, with the bands, with the people who thought they were celebrities but really weren't. And um, because I was with him, I got the same all-access badge, and it was really pretty cool. And, you know, Rick, being the extrovert that he is, really enjoyed that. He even ended up on a couple of the band's tour buses with him, just kind of chilling, you know. He, he loved that, it was very fun to know that we had all access to this event. Well, so where would you like all access? You know, what would be something that would be so cool to you if you had an all access pass to? I mean, I think of things like, um, you know, the Oval Office at the White House. That would be so cool to be able to see where the, you know, the seat of our government is. Or how about the winning locker room, you know, at the, at the Super Bowl? Or maybe tickets to the Final Four, which I know is going on right now. Those, that'd be really cool if you were a sports fan, which I'm not, but I'm sure it would be Anyway, but for me, I mean, I think it'd be so cool. What if I had all access to every store at South Coast Plaza? I just, <laughs> that would be awesome. But a greater honor for all of us is that God has actually given us all access to himself. And I wanna tell you the bottom line to this whole series as we begin today, and it's this. God is a relational God. And he wants to be in relationship with you. He wants you to get to know him. He wants you to be a part of him. He wants to be a part of you. He wants to be a part of your life in the high points. He wants to be a part of the low points. The times when you're feeling good, you know, pretty good about who you've become. He wants to be a part of your life when you're actually pretty ashamed at some of the things you've thought and said and done. He wants to be a part of the dreams that you have for your family. He wants to be a part of your doubts, of your questions. He wants to get down into the middle of the messiness and the complicated situations of your life. He wants to be there on the dark nights. He wants to be there during the successes, the births, the deaths, the marriages. 